Don't let the looks fool you. This beautiful bird stomps snakes to death. And this owl can see mice that are hidden beneath the snow. Oh, and we have a spider that throws a net over its prey when attacking. The electric eel is probably the darkest hunter of them all. The eels use their electric charge to stun and kill their prey. The body of an electric eel generates up to 500 volts of energy if it discharges all of its electrolytes at the same time. The eel will lay in the dark and murky waters waiting for a small fish or insect to swim by. The eel senses the movement in the water and releases a doublet two quick free electric shocks that stun the victim. Once paralyzed from the electricity, the eel can swim over and eat the catch. Although they use their body-generated electricity for the attack, it can also be used as a defense mechanism. So when a large predator mistakes an electric eel for an ordinary one and goes to bite it, the animal will discharge all of the electrolytes, releasing a powerful shock. Sometimes the shock's powerful enough to kill the predator. Next up, we have the owl snowy hunt. This little vole is a relative of hamsters. They have a long, hairy tail, and in the wintertime, they use the snow blanket for warmth and to hide from predators. But not all predators. With its heightened senses, the snowy owl can hear the little vole rummaging beneath the snow. Although the rodent has big ears to hear the predators coming from all directions, a snowy owl is deathly silent. If you look closely, you'll see that the edges of the snowy owl's wings are fringed. This breaks the flapping noise a normal bird makes during flight. This way, when the owl attacks, it's in complete silence. The only thing the vole will see before its imminent death are the two giant talons ready to dig it up from beneath the snow. The net casting spider's night hunt uses a special net for hunting. They can be found in Africa, Australia, and in some parts of America, but they're very rare. They usually hunt at night thanks to their large eyes. Getting close, you'll notice that the spider hangs from the top of a tree branch holding something that resembles a net. This is the weapon they use when smashing that like button just like you should do if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, it's the weapon they'll use when capturing small insects like crickets, ants, and moths. The spider sets a feces trap to draw the insects. As soon as it sees that the prey is within reach, it'll quickly descend and wrap the prey in its net using lightning quick reflexes. Everything happens so fast that if it wasn't filmed by a slow motion capture camera, We'd only see the spider, the prey, and then the spider with the prey wrapped in a cocoon of silk threads. And now comes the wolf pack tactic. Wolves hunt in packs, everyone knows that, but did you know that they prefer their prey to run instead of staying in one place? For example, let's assume that a mother bear is chasing two or three wolves away from her cub. The fourth wolf in the pack could then swoop in and snatch the bear cub. But if the mother bear stands her ground, isn't intimidated by their numbers, and keeps close to her baby, both of them will likely survive. The wolves want their prey to run. In fact, they'll organize the pack in such a way to isolate the weakest member from the group. Once they do so, it's only a matter of time before the animal makes a mistake and stumbles. The wolves know they aren't big predators, so taking down an elk would be nearly impossible. But when the elk falls to the ground, they can easily bite its neck and kill it instantly, Killing large prey like this ensures food for the entire pack. The secretary bird kills its prey by stomping it to death. The secretary bird is what you get when a stork with makeup has a bad hair day. They might look a little strange, but that's only to distract you from the fact that they're deadly killers. Hunting in pairs, these birds are native to Africa, and their main diet consists of large insects, beetles, mice, and hares. They'll stomp the ground with their feet to get the little animals out of their burrows the mice get scared, run away, and the hunt begins. In addition to small rodents, these birds are known for killing snakes. To kill the reptiles, they'll puff out their chest, extend their wings as an intimidation tactic, then using only their legs, they'll aim straight for the head of the snake. All it takes is one lucky hit and the battle's over. If the snake attacks, it'll usually go for the flapping wings, which is pointless. And then we have the cheetah's casual kill. Cheetahs are the fastest land animal on the planet. They can hunt alone or in pairs. When hunting alone, the cheetah relies solely on its speed for hunting. The cheetah can reach 70 miles per hour when running at top speed. Against such agility, prey doesn't stand a chance. Hunting larger prey alone would be nearly impossible because the cheetah is relatively small. That's why they've adapted to hunt in packs. This way they can take down large prey like wildebeest, ostriches, and zebras. Did you know that archer fish hunt using nothing but water? Because they do, and it's very strange. 
These small fish are omnivorous, which means they'll consume anything that floats on the surface of the water. And if there's nothing on the surface, they'll use their natural water pistol to knock down insects from branches six feet above the water. Scientists have studied these little fish to determine how this fish hits their target every time. They found out that regardless of the distance, the archer fish would aim and shoot down a cricket every time. They do this by opening and closing their mouth, which varies the power and reach of the water jet. Having a better understanding of how these fish work could give us better surgical tools, fire hoses, and much more. Next comes the eagle snatch. Eagles have the best eyes in the animal kingdom. Their excellent long-distance vision allows them to swoop down and capture the fish in the water while flying hundreds and even thousands of feet above the lake. They can see eight times as far as humans can. Couple this with their extra sharp and powerful talons, and you can see why these birds are the apex predators of the sky. But they don't only hunt fish, they also hunt rabbits, foxes, lizards, snakes, and goats. It might sound strange, but they can do it under the right circumstances. You see, the eagle knows it can't lift a goat in the air, so they'll wait for the goat to get on a steep hillside. Then they'll quickly swoop in, push the goat over rocks, and let gravity do the rest. Then it's only a matter of collecting the bounty. Let's not forget about the salmon catching bears. When the salmon return to spawn in the spring, the bears are waiting for the feast of their lifetime. They enter into a phase called hyperphagia, which is basically a fancy way of saying they get insanely hungry and can't be satiated. Because of this phase, a grizzly can eat about 100,000 calories of fish, and because fish is plentiful then, they can afford to be picky. Usually, the bears will consume the entire fish, but now they only eat the skin, the fatty head, and the eggs of the salmon. Even though they're good hunters in shallow water, they're even better when hunting upstream. They'll position themselves where the river narrows and open their mouth. The fish will simply jump straight into their mouths. The killer whale has the most refined hunting technique out of all ocean predators. This is a killer whale tempting a bird with a small fish in its mouth. When the bird takes the bait, the orca closes its jaws, killing the bird and eating it underwater. They've also evolved special hunting techniques for taking down dolphins. The pod of orcas will try to find a lone dolphin, or if they can't, they'll single it out from the group. Once alone, the orcas can easily kill and consume its fatty blubber and meat. In the northern parts of the world, orcas have developed specialized hunting tactics for seals. The pod, headed by the matriarch, will bob in and out of the water to see where the seals are located. Then, using their combined power and speed, they will submerge the ice shard, or break it into smaller chunks, forcing the seals into the water. From here, the seals have only one chance of survival, reach the nearest ice shard. If they don't, it's game over. YouTube thinks you should watch this video next.